Aortic dissection is a serious medical condition in which the blood is going to dissect the intima of the arterial wall, uh, the aortic wall, and the blood will start flowing between the intima and the media, forming blood-filled channels within the aortic wall. There are two types of aortic dissection, type A and type B. The type A is the more common and involves the ascending and descending aorta, while the type B is less common and involves the aorta which is distal to the subclavian artery. There are many complications of an aortic dissection. First of all, let me explain this diagram. This is the left ventricle, this is the left atrium, this is the aortic valve, uh, this is the pericardial space or pericardial cavity which is filled with blood. I'll tell you in a while why this is happening. This is the muscle of the heart, myocardium, and this is the blood in the ventricle. Uh, and this is the aorta, the ascending aorta. As I said that aortic dissection occurs because of a tear in the wall of the aorta. So here I have shown a tear, but in this case this tear in the vessel wall, the aortic wall, will cause the blood to flow through abnormal channels that is within the uh, vessel wall. Okay, So this will be chiefly between the intima and the media and this will be an abnormal pathway for the blood. Now this is what aortic dissection is. Okay, So what complications can this arise? First of all, this blood, if it can go forward, it can also go backward. If it goes backward, this ends up in the pericardial space. And when there is blood in the pericardial space, that is going to restrict the contraction of the blood. It is going to restrict it and this is known as cardiac tamponade. This is a very dangerous complication of aortic dissection. Secondly, what can happen is that there can be overall rupture of the aorta. Now, once there is rupture, it will lead to hemorrhage into abdominal and thoracic cavity that will lead to shock and all that stuff. Fourthly, we can have uh, this blood to re-enter into the normal lumen and thus formation of double barreled aorta. This is a double barrel. Lastly, we can also have coronary artery occlusion. Now, how does this occur? We know that uh, the coronary artery openings are behind the um, aortic wall leaflets and when all of this is going on here, they are, they are going to be compressed and there will be uh, low blood supply to the heart muscle and thus it can lead to MI as well. There can also be end organ ischemia, chiefly renal, leading to all sorts of complications. Now who is affected by aortic dissection? We have two causes of uh, aortic dissection, either high blood pressure or poor intrinsic quality of the uh, vessel wall. So uh, if we have high blood pressure that is probably an older male in his 40s or 60s and if it occurs in young individuals then they probably have connective tissue disorders such as uh, Marfan syndrome and Ehlers Danlos syndrome etc. The chief etiologies of aortic dissection involve cystic medial degeneration which is uh, degeneration of the media of the vessel wall due to any reason due to atherosclerosis or due to obliteration of the vasovasorum as I explained in the previous video. We can also have connective tissue disorders. We can have it because of trauma due to therapeutic or diagnostic arterial cannulations due to pregnancy. Family history is very important and also aortic wall defects can cause this aortic dissection. But remember one thing that aortic dissection is not common in disorders with medial scarring. That means if the media of the blood vessel of the aorta has scarring as I mentioned in the previous video in the case of syphilis which causes uh, fibrosis and is protective against aortic dissection they are not going to have this disease because the fibrosis will be protective against aortic dissection remember this point it is very important the pathogenesis of aortic dissection is very simple we know that in normal aorta we have collagen elastin and smooth muscle cells now with age, atherosclerosis of the visa visorum or all the other etiologies that I mentioned, what will happen is that the media of the aortic wall will undergo medial cystic degeneration. This simply means that the media has undergone ischemia or degenerative changes due to age and only basophilic ground substance will be remaining which is of no use to us. We need smooth muscle cells and elastin in the uh, media. So when only this remains, this will lead to a weakened vessel wall and this weakened vessel wall when combined with hypertension will lead to aortic dissection. Regarding the morphology of an aortic dissection, as I said, cystic medial degeneration is the chief culprit. It consists of elastic tissue fragmentation and collection of matrix material in areas of fragmentation in tunica media in small cleft-like spaces. This simply means that the amorphous ground substance that is being formed will be collected in areas of the elastic tissue fragmentation and thus the appearance of uh, small cysts uh, will be there.
how is an aortic dissection going to present itself? It is going to appear as a sharp, tearing chest pain radiating backwards between the scapulae and if the tear goes down further, so does the pain. Regarding the diagnosis, we can have widening of iota in the chest x-ray, blood pressure will be different in the left and right arms, TEE which is not a, a normal uh, echocardiogram but it is a transesophageal one that means the device is inserted into the esophagus to get a better view of the aorta. We can also do a CT scan MRA which is like MRI but looks at blood vessels. Regarding the treatment of an aortic dissection we need to know that early recognition is key to treatment. Regarding medications, we can give medications to lower blood pressure and surgical treatment can be to remove as much of the dissected iota as possible and reconstruct using a graft. That's all about aortic dissection.